Welcome to View from the Top. I'm Modili Sharafai, so thank you for joining us today. Almost two-thirds of the world's billionaires made their fortunes from scratch, relying on grit and determination. We are told that good luck and good timing is also helpful when creating vast fortunes from scratch. We love rags to riches stories because many of us start off with nothing and aspire to make a success of our lives. We find rags to riches stories inspirational because they help us to believe that anything is possible even when you are starting from zero or when you are starting from 200 naira as Dr. Cosmas Maduka did. The Koschari story is a story of how one man turned a 200 naira one man business into a multi billion naira conglomerate in 40 years. I'm truly delighted to have Dr. Cosmas Maduka, Chairman Koschari's group, on view from the top today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Modele. It's my pleasure to be in your program. Here is a quick biography before we start our conversation. Born in Newi, Anambra State on December 24, 1958. He was educated only up to elementary three level when he was withdrawn for financial reasons. Dr. Maduka became an apprentice trader and auto mechanic under his uncle and was to start his own business at the age of 14. After a couple of failed partnerships, Koschari's Motors, which he founded in 1975 as a one-man business, has now grown to become a conglomerate with diverse interest in banking, manufacturing, ICT, agriculture, and the auto subsector of the economy. The Koschari's group also has heavy presence in African countries, including Gabon, Ghana, and Cote d'Ivoire. An alumnus of the Harvard Business School under the Executive Education Program, he was awarded Honorary Doctor of Business Administration by the University of Nigeria in Suka in 2003. And in 2012, he was conferred with the national honor of the Commander of the Order of the Niger. He served as a director in Access Bank for 12 years and currently serves on the board of many companies, including CG Eco LLP, First System Refinishes, etc. He was president of the Nigeria Table Tennis Federation from 1996 to 2008 and is the vice president of the Nigeria Japan Association. Uh, Koscharis is more famous for your auto, auto business. I'd like to find out first, what inputs did stakeholders like yourself have in the automobile development plan aimed at bringing the car plants back to Nigeria? You know, the federal government of Nigeria about two and a half years ago started the new auto policy. But for me, what is most important is to have looked backward and say what made the first auto movement we had in this country failed. Because Charis as a group, is putting our shoulder to the wheel. Initially, we believe it was premature because there are some basic things that needed to be in place that are not there. Um, if you talk about auto industry, you can't truly make a meaningful impact in auto industry without a steel plant being available, without a petrochemical industry being available, Uninterruptible power supply is also a prerequisite. But like everything in life, you always will ask which one comes first, chicken or egg. Initially, I was of strong opinion that where our competitive advantage as a country lies is in agriculture. And that was why it's on a Costalis business plan to go into agriculture. Currently, we are cultivating about 3,000 hectares of rice in Anambra State. Okay, in fact, we started our first harvest season. Um, because here is a country with eight climatic conditions that we can farm all through around the years, and we spend over three billion dollars in importing rice, close to four billion importing wheat. Embarrassing to every Nigeria, you go to Abuja and get to some malls and you see bananas made in Cameroon. And one begins to wonder, are there really an entrepreneurs in this country? Are there no, do these opportunities burn and one is not taking advantage of it? But rather than focusing in this area where I think we have more competitive advantage, the past administration said auto industry is a key. It will create a lot of jobs, which I believe for a 200 million or close to 200 million population, that is also a way for us to be. But the underlying question is, where is the will 
is the will available to make it a success? Because if the will is not there to support physical uh, enforcement or uh, the, uh, the, uh, the enforcement of the physical policy, it will fail like the first one fell. We need to learn from countries like India, South Africa, that close their market to any type of used vehicle is not imported in South Africa because they wanted to develop their auto industry. Today, big names like BMW, Mercedes, Toyota, all the big players in auto manufacturers are in South Africa manufacturing for the local market and exporting. Before then and until now, no used car is allowed in South Africa. It's a combination of so many things. Either we wait for all the infrastructures to be in place to start or we start the way we are, but for this to truly be a success, government has to play an important role on it. It's not just a business of entrepreneurs alone. It's not surprising today that either Toyota is not willing to come directly, Elizabeth is jump-starting it, because Charis is jump-starting Ford relationship, Kia is jump-starting, Stallion is jump-starting, but none of these manufacturers are taking a bold step to bring in investment. They're not enthusiastic about this. For them, it's a deep water, and they need to be tested with one leg until they are sure how deep it is before they come in. But to be a true Nigeria, we have to be identified, share from her shame and glory, whatever she is, is what we are. So believing that Nigerians are the people who are going to develop their economy, people like us are putting, taking a great stake in investing in auto policy. Ford has signed on with us, but we are starting at Ikeja this month, the October. If government is willing to identify with this policy and they're willing to see it through, what are your projections for the industry and what pitfalls uh, are you looking out for and actively planning against? We're starting this year and our first plan was to produce 5,000 units in our first one year, just on one brand. So if all things being in place, we, the capacity we are installing in the first instance, if we do like shift job, can do that 8,000 units per annum. What does the new CBN directive on foreign exchange utilization mean for your kind of business? Very challenging, but it won't be an issue if it's applicable to everybody because what is important for a businessman is to have a level playing field. Once the level is the same for every other person, then we are all at the same point and it will be what our government work and it will not be an issue. What is a problem is if some other people are favored or have some advantage against others, but if the same principle is basic for every other person, it, it wouldn't make any difference. Now, how is the vehicle credit purchase scheme working given the peculiar Nigerian challenges? Officially, the microfinance uh, is still a problem uh, because um, um, if you look at um, the middle class is not thriving here, who are supposedly to utilize this microcredit to purchase car, is still a corporate sales that is driving new car sales. Many of the private citizens are all used car supporters, and it's not surprising that we have close to 700,000 unit market in a year, but brand new car sell under 100,000. The other 580,000 are all used cars. So, and the only way the auto industry, frankly, will succeed is to migrate those 580,000 to purchase new vehicle. The federal government under the past administration have said there was some money they used to charge anything that has to do with auto component 2%, they used to call it NAC, which they have been keeping. They are going to make that money available to create a single digit interest rate to support people to purchase vehicle is a way of you know, providing a catalyst to that industry to help it grow. But a whole lot need to be done. Um, clearly, if 
all of these things being in place, you know, Dangote come up with his refinery, there are petrochemical industry, uh, because um, when we talk about CKD, uh, uh, when we talk about um, uh, auto manufacturing, semi knockdown is really not what where the economic value is. It's a, it's a, step, it's a, a step forward in the first direction. But at the end of the day, the cars are not even much expensive because it's a car that has gone through production, dismantled, and bring us a kit. So it's going to even be much more expensive than buying a brand new car that would have driven out of the factory and get to the, the ship uh, initially. Where the value comes is where we get into full, complete knockdown. Start from the flat sheet to putting all the other components together. You can't do this without the manufacturers themselves, the brand manufacturers themselves stepping in here. And it is only the number that will drive that to be possible. So government has an important role to help generate market by policies they are going to put in place if they are truly uh, supporting the auto policy. We have to take a break now. When we return, Dr. Maduka and I will be talking about entrepreneurship. Please stay with us. <laughs>